Microsoft wants you to dump your Xbox One in 2023. This iconic franchise is finally on Xbox consoles. Microsoft says 2023 is the year you need to upgrade. And Phil Spencer gives Halo fans some hope. Let's discuss. What's up guys and welcome to another edition of Xbox Ready, the YouTube channel that works to keep you in the loop on all things Xbox. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, maybe give me a follow on Twitter or on Instagram at State of Ray. We got another news update video today, so let's get started. Age of Empires has finally made its way over to Xbox consoles, starting with Age of Empires 2, the definitive edition being added to Xbox consoles and Game Pass on January 31st. It should be on your Xbox available to play right now. Now, I was fortunate enough to have Xbox provide me access to the preview build for this port, and I was really, really excited to jump in. I grew up a huge fan of RTS games, so the fact that they're on consoles right now, it's just so mind-blowing to the little kid in me. Now, Age of Empires is a franchise that has been around for a long time. It's arguably one of Microsoft's most celebrated franchises ever next to things like Halo, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Gears. I'm gonna get down to the nitty gritty, the big question on everyone's mind. How can they take Age of Empires, which has traditionally been played on mouse and keyboard, and for good reason, it's a very complex, intricate game. How do they map all of that, take that whole experience and put it on your Xbox controller? And yes, that all sounds like a tall order, but I am pleased to say that that. I think they really nailed it, guys. Now, before you get started on any part of this game, it suggests that you play the William Wallace campaign in order to get accustomed to playing Age of Empires with a controller. And then it walks you through this very, very, very helpful tutorial. It eases you into it. You have the option between a more streamlined interface for the controller and a more advanced mapping. Using the advanced interface opens up a couple of more options that a lot of classic RTS players will enjoy. The advanced interface has a feature that's like a must for me when I'm playing Age of Empires and that's the ability to take specific units, click on them, and group them into their own special little crew. You see pretty early on that if you hold the left trigger and then you press a directional button, you have the ability to select all your melee units and all your cavalry and all your siege units. Now, anyone who's played Age of Empires knows that different melee units do different things. For example, if I'm trying to fight off an enemy cavalry charge, I'm gonna take all my pikemen, all my spear guys, and put them in a little square formation. Versus when I'm pouring over the top of enemy walls, and then I kind of want more beefier units, more like infantrymen, long swordsmen, two-handed swordsmen, heavy cavalry. So I was happy to see that in the advanced interface, I was able to further refine specific groups and assign them to different roles. This was a great point brought up by Clobril on Twitter. He does shout out the fact that you have this really cool and helpful villager automation system. So for example, you have 10 villagers and you want to put them to work. You could say, hey, I want a certain percentage of my villagers to focus on gathering food, and then I want a certain percentage of them working on gathering wood. They have a ton of presets depending on what you want to focus on, like, hey, I want to focus on a more defensive kind of approach. I want to focus on just like the basics right now. And if you don't like those presets, you can set them for yourself and it automatically gets your villagers to work depending on your goals. Finally, getting Age of Empires on Xbox consoles and Game Pass is a huge win for Xbox. It also further diversifies Game Pass's offerings. It's nice to see more strategy games make their way onto Game Pass. It's a game that challenges you to be the best multitasker that you can be. Thanks again to Xbox for giving me access to the preview build of this and for sending over this awesome controller. I know it's probably a little out of focus right now. It's not really lit, but it has like chain mail on the bottom and a special Age of Empires 2 logo on the back to celebrate it finally coming to Xbox consoles. Next up, let's talk about Forza Motorsport. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there were really disappointed when Developer Direct rolled around and you noticed that there was no firm release date for this game. And if you were an owner of a previous gen Xbox, the One X, the One S, the base Xbox One, I may have some more bad news for you. Microsoft released a statement regarding Forza Motorsport's supported platforms, and they have confirmed that you won't be able to natively play this game on past gen Xboxes. You can only play it through cloud streaming. They said, while there will not be a native Xbox One version of the game, Xbox One players can stream Forza Motorsport through Xbox Cloud Gaming, included in Game Pass Ultimate. Now, for a lot of you out there, this may not be a surprise, especially if you've been following my channel for a while, you knew that these new crop of games were probably going to be next-gen titles only. And from what we saw about Forza Motorsport at Developer Direct, it looks damn good. And they said specifically that they built this game from the ground up to take advantage of the next-gen hardware of the Series X and the Series S. But that doesn't make it any less of a bummer for all my Xbox One owners out there. I also double-checked Redfall's page on the Microsoft Store, and it's currently listed as only 
only coming to the Xbox Series X and S and PC platforms. So it looks like 2023 is finally the year that Xbox, at least the first party titles, are moving on to next gen only. This makes a lot of sense because we know a lot of these newer games that Xbox is putting out, they plan to raise the price to $70. It's going to be $70 just like everyone else in the industry with the idea that these were going to be bigger, beefier games. It's looking increasingly like we have to say goodbye to the Xbox One consoles. And I know there's a lot of anxiety surrounding something like that, but at least we have options going forward. You can stream the games to your Xbox One console if you don't want to make the upgrade. And if you don't want to blow 500 bucks on a Series X, you do have a cheaper option with the Series S if you do want to make the leap to next gen. And right now, shockingly, the Series S is on sale for, I don't even know what, I think it was on sale for the Lunar New Year. It has that same Christmas holiday season discount all the way down to $240 here in the US. And on eBay, they're selling a Series S and a copy of Watch Dogs Legions for that same $240. So if you want to pick up a next gen Xbox, make sure you're ready for games like Forza Motorsport, Redfall, Starfield, but you don't want to break the bank. Now is the perfect time to do it with one of these deals. Let's talk about this interview Phil Spencer did with IGN recently. He confirmed a couple of interesting things. The first major one for me is that he confirmed Forza Motorsport is a 2023 game. It's going to be coming out this year. He says, I know there were some questions on the date on Forza Motorsport because we just revealed the year. Everybody should know just the quality that Turn 10 puts into Motorsport. If you look historically, it's going to be in this game. That's the thing that first and foremost is most important and we will come out with a date, no doubt, when we're a little bit closer. But we just wanted to reaffirm to people that this is a 2023 game. I don't know, my gut's telling me like Q3, Q4 for this game, but then again, that is just a feeling that is not confirmed at all. Phil Spencer speaks a little bit on Halo and 343 Industries as well. For those of you who are not aware, Microsoft has laid off 10,000 employees, and a lot of those positions seem to be affecting the team at 343, specifically the guys who work on the Halo Infinite campaign. So there's been a lot of anxiety around the Halo franchise, what are they going to do with it? 343 came out and they said, okay, we're going to keep working on it. Master Chief is going to stay with us. We remain committed to bringing more Halo games and content. But there's just been a lot of questions flying around and a lot of criticisms, of course. He says Halo will remain critically important to what Xbox is doing. And 343 is critically important to the success of Halo. Now, okay, as the CEO of Xbox, I think Phil is doing something nice here. He's defending 343 publicly, but as a fan on the outside, Outside looking in, it's like, okay, I've never worked in game development, so I don't know a thing. I'm not telling them how to do their jobs, but under their leadership, the Halo brand has wilted. And it's hard to believe that Halo Infinite, at least since Xbox's launch, I find it really hard to believe that it's moved the needle for Xbox in a way that's beneficial to them in terms of Game Pass subscriptions, in terms of just sales numbers, regarding like the whatever money they make off the store and the multiplayer. But it kind of seems like it's like, okay, we released Halo. No one really liked it. Let's sort of support it. And then we'll make room for the shiny new stuff that we have coming from Bethesda. But at least according to Phil Spencer, he says in terms of support studios and other things, that's just part of the development and having other partners help us. But the heart and soul of Halo is with 343 and the team that's there. And I have the utmost confidence in the team that's there and leading in the plan that they have going forward. Hopefully we see a little bit of a turnaround when it comes to the narrative of Halo Infinite, because again, I am rooting for it and I feel like all Xbox fans are we all have great memories with the Halo franchise and we want them to continue he also says in this interview for I feel like the third time in like six or seven months that 2022 was light on games and he apologizes for that he says as the head of the company he takes responsibility not to say that it was completely barren because we had some really cool unique experiences like Pentiment like As Dusk Falls both games I really enjoyed but those weren't meant to be like the marquee first party additions to Xbox. They were supposed to be supplementary. They were supposed to say like, hey, we know we have these big AAA games, but if you want to try these more intimate, more thoughtful experiences, we have those there too. So at least 2023 is starting off better than 2022 and hopefully Xbox can keep that same energy going forward. The last notable thing about this interview is that Phil Spencer, at least publicly, is very confident that the Activision Blizzard acquisition is going to go through. Despite by being sued by the FTC. He says, when we announced the deal a year ago, we talked about an 18 month time frame. We're 12 months into that. I think we continue to stay focused on getting the deal closed. I think we can do some amazing
piecing things together with the teams at Activision Blizzard King on the mobile side and collaborating them with new creative and new ways to deliver their content. So my confidence remains high. We're actively working with the regulatory boards around the world that need to approve for this, and it's been a learning experience for me. A lot of time spent, a lot of travel, a lot of conversations, but they're conversations where I get to talk about our industry and the work that we do and why we do it. All right, guys, so there's one more thing to say about this Phil Spencer interview. So previously, shortly after Developer Direct, Xbox confirmed that they were going to be doing a live show in the summer of 2023. And since E3 was back, I just assumed that they were going to be back at E3. I thought it could be a good opportunity considering that PlayStation and Nintendo weren't going to be there. And in this interview, Phil Spencer speaks very lovingly about E3. He's very nostalgic for it. So in my mind, I was like, okay, Xbox is going to be at E3 again. It's going to be like the good old days. But it's being reported by multiple news outlets that Xbox is skipping E3. So there's not going to be PlayStation, there's not going to be Nintendo, and there's not going to be Xbox at E3. Don't know what they're going to have, but, you know, it's good to at least see E3 sort of making a comeback. And then rereading the interview with Phil Spencer, he was saying, hey, I love E3, but we're going to kind of do our show in a way that doesn't totally disrupt theirs. Obviously, last year in June 2022, we had a standalone Xbox showcase, the Xbox Bethesda showcase, and they combined that with Xbox Fan Fest in downtown LA. So I would assume it's going to be pretty similar to that, except maybe a little bit. When they do a show this year, I assume they're going to have playable demos of some things that they announce, or maybe upcoming titles in 2023. A man can dream, right? This could also be an opportunity for Xbox to talk about bigger titles that everyone wants to know more about, but aren't releasing in 2023. Maybe we get another Hi-Fi Rush situation where they're like, hey, here's this new game, and you can play it right now. I don't know if you could do that twice in a year, but it was really awesome when they did that for Developer Direct. So yeah, Xbox may be skipping E3, but no matter what, it's going to be a really awesome some summer for games because E3 is still going on even if Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo are not going to be there then Xbox is going to have their own show and then there's going to be Summer Games Fest it's going to be a good time. Next up let's talk about Starfield another Xbox first party title that does not have a firm release date it's just supposed to release sometime in 2023 there's been a lot of questions surrounding this game there's been a lot of hype surrounding this game and a lot of criticism because it's Bethesda's first IP in years for First, like new fresh RPG experience and it's the first time one of their RPGs is going to be exclusive to the Xbox platform. There have been reports floating around that development for this game has been a little bit rocky. There's been a couple of leaks of developers criticizing the development process and the engine and things like that. There's been a couple of leaks like oh it could release in the spring but Australia spring which would be like September November but no firm release date so far. According to Jez Corden over at Windows Central, he says he's been getting a lot of DMs because people have been seeing this release date floating around for Starfield, March 23rd, 2023. And he says the reality of the situation is probably that's most likely a placeholder date and not the actual release date. He says, we have it on good authority that Starfield's launch date isn't yet set in stone. Speaking to us on condition of anonymity, trusted sources have told us that Starfield is now playable in full from start to finish. The game is truly vast spanning multiple star systems. As such, the polishing effort is similarly gargantuan in nature. Bethesda's creation engine games feature spider webs of branching narratives, intersecting consequences, and overlapping systems. Now, the second part of that sounds dope, and it's what we've come to expect from Bethesda RPGs, a world where your consequences actively shape the world and your quest lines as you progress through the game. The first part of that, not so exciting. Bethesda is playable from start to finish. Okay, that's not a lot of information to go on it's like okay you can play it from start to finish but is it good is it really polished is it fun and is that in regards just to the campaign or the like main storyline we know that Bethesda's RPGs there is much much more to them than just the main quest a lot of people like myself like to do pretty much everything else before going back to the main quest so yeah maybe not the most exciting update you can play Starfield the biggest Xbox game this generation from start to finish 
but it is a good sign that they are on track to at least release this game in a timely manner. Maybe not in the first half of 2023, definitely not in March, but at least sometime this year. Again, my gut is Q3, Q4, sometime before the game awards so they get game of the year recognition. Historically, Bethesda RPGs have loved releasing in November 11-11. That was supposed to be the release date for Starfield last year. Maybe they'll push it to that anniversary date again. Either way, I am very excited to learn more about Starfield. We know that the next developer direct is going to be dedicated solely to Starfield, just to that game. Hopefully, whenever that happens, we have a clearer idea of what this game is about, what it offers, and hopefully maybe a release window. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. That's all the news I have for today. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Maybe give me a follow on Twitter or on Instagram at State of Ray, and we'll see you in the next video.